Hey there, in this tutorial we'll be making an RPG text box. In the text box you'll have a name, an image and some text. And the image is optional so it also works without it. So let's begin. In this project I have a sprite for the text box. Later we'll be able to draw it as a rectangle of any size using a certain script. Now its origin should be top left. Now I also have an NPC sprite. Its origin should be middle center. Then I have two images that will be used in the text box. Their origins should be middle center as well. And this is the second image. Now here I have an object for the NPC. I've also placed it in the room. Now here I have a script called draw 9 slice. Basically, if you have a square sprite, this script allows you to draw it as a rectangle. So it keeps the corners intact and scales up the edges and the center. You can find the script in the description. Now I'll go to objects and add an object for the text box. Now in the text box, I'll add the create event. In the event, I'll add this. Here I'm creating a DS list to store all the messages for the text box. Each message in the list will be an array containing info for that message. Now this variable stores which message we are on, so 0 would be the first message. Now this variable stores the text that is displayed on the text box. The string characters will be displayed one by one, so this variable will store the part that is shown. This variable basically stores how many string characters are shown. This is the speed of the text, so this value will be added to the message char variable. Now as I said earlier, each item in the messages list will be an array. So this enum will be used for the items in those arrays. So first you have the messages text, then the name and then the image. Now here I'm getting the dimensions of the GUI layer where the text box will be drawn. Now this is the height of the text box. So it's 45% of the GUI height and it's flawed to avoid decimal values. Now the width of the text box is simply equal to the GUI width. Now this is the position of the text box on the GUI layer. So the x is 0 and the y is the GUI height minus the text box's height. Now the padding is simply the distance between the edge of the text box and its contents. Now I'm gonna add the cleanup event and here simply destroy the messages list. And now let's add the draw GUI event and draw the text box here. Now there's a lot of code so I'm gonna have to resize the window. So let's start at the top. Now this is the messages list and this is the message that we are on. So it gets the array for the current message from the list. Then it stores it in this local variable. Now from that array we are getting the name and the image. Now for that we are using the msg enum. Now here I'm just changing the font. Now here I'm drawing the text box using the draw 9 slice script. So it takes the position where it will be drawn, the dimensions, the sprite and the image index. So it's gonna draw the text box's background. Now these variables are the coordinates where the contents will be drawn. So these coordinates will keep moving as you keep drawing separate elements of the text box. So it starts at the base position plus the padding. Now we are checking if the image exists. If it does, it gets the width and the height of the image. And then it draws the image. I'm adding half the width to the X and half the height to the Y. Now here, I'm adding the image's width and the padding to the draw X. So that's where the name and the text are going to be drawn. Now here, I'm changing the draw color to black for the text. And here, I'm drawing the name at the draw coordinates. And here, I'm adding the height of the name string and the padding to the draw Y. So that's where the actual message will be drawn. Now here, I'm getting the maximum width for the text. So any text after that width will be wrapped to a new line. So for that, I'm subtracting the draw X and the padding from the width. Now to enable text wrapping, I'm drawing the message with draw text EXT. So these are the coordinates and this is the message. Now this is the distance between each line, so I've set it to minus 1 to use the default value. 
and this is the maximum width. Then at the end, I reset the color back to white. Now let's add the step event. Inside the event, I'll add this. Here I'm getting the array for the current message. Then I'm getting the message text from that array. For now, I'm simply applying that text to the message text variable. Of course, we're gonna change that later. So for now, the first message will be fully displayed. Now let's open the NPC object and make it talk. I'll add the create event here and inside it, I'll add this. Now here I have one array that has multiple arrays inside it. So they are the messages for this NPC. These arrays will later be added to the message list in the text box. So the order of the items in these arrays should match the order in the MSG enum. So first you have the text, then the name, and then the image. So the same order is followed here. First you have the text, then the name, and then the image sprite. Now in the fourth message, I've set the image to minus one. I've done this to demonstrate that the text box works without an image. Now as an example for using the text box, I'll add the mouse left pressed event. Here I'll add this. Here we are making sure that there's no text box already in the room. So then we create a text box instance in the instances layer. Its ID is stored in this local variable. Now here we are getting the messages list of the text box. So now we can access that list through this variable. Now here I'm running a for loop for the MSG array. That array has all the messages for this NPC. Now inside the loop, we are taking the message array from the NPC's array and putting it inside the messages list. So this gets the message array for the current iteration. Then it simply adds that array inside the messages list. So when you click on the NPC, a text box will be created with its messages. Now I'll open our text box and open its step event. Here we'll add some code to display the messages one by one. So before adding any code, I'll remove this line. In its place, I'll add this. Here I'm using the function string copy to get only a part of the string. So this is the original string, which is the message text. This is the position inside the string from where the new string will start. Using one, it starts from the beginning of the string. And this is the number of characters to copy from that position. Now here we are checking if the string is not fully drawn. So it checks if the message R variable is smaller than or equal to the length of the original string. In that case, it increases the message R variable with the message speed value. Now after this code, I'll add this. Now here we are checking if the string is not fully drawn. But if it is fully drawn, then we'll come down to this else part. So that means that the current message is complete. So then we check if the enter key is pressed. If it is, then this code runs. Now this condition makes sure that we are not on the last message. So it gets the ID of the last message by subtracting one from the size of the messages list. Then it checks if the current message ID is smaller than that. So if the condition is true, message ID is increased by one and message char is reset to zero. But if the condition is false and we are on the last message, then the else block will run and the instance will be destroyed. Now let's run the game. I'll click on the NPC and the text box will appear. Then I can press enter to move on to the next message. Now in the fourth message, there is no image, but the text box still works. And the message also wraps to the new line. So that's it for this tutorial. If you have any tutorial suggestions, feel free to leave a comment and to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.